everybody, very welcome to yet another mentor uh, video. I hope you're all doing fantastic as always. So, today we are going to talk a little bit more about technical issues when it comes to the 737 and how to fly it, okay? Um, if we look at this from the beginning of a type rating, there are a couple of fundamental things that you need to understand when it comes to how to operate this aircraft, okay? What we're going to start with talking about is scan flows, all right? So, scan flows is basically um, a way that Boeing envisions us using the panels in the flight deck in an organized manner, okay, doing it the same way all the time because we as humans tend to remember things with our motoric memory to a large extent, which means that if we do things in the same time, so in the same way all the time, it's easier for us to remember it, especially when we're under pressure. So we'll be able to do something basically on autopilot uh, while we engage our brains in something else. Okay? Otherwise, if you have to constantly think about what to do next and which order to do things every single time, that will take up a lot of your um, potential. And if you do it the same way, if you kind of get used to how to do it, it's going to be much easier for you. So the way that the scan flows generally are built is that you can see that all of these panels are organized in straight rows like this, like that, and going down like this. So basically all of our setup procedures will follow that. So we will go from left to right in the overhead panel, starting from the top, going through all of the switches down, like this, checking all the panels to be in the correct position, all of the switches to be in the correct position, and then coming from here, doing this, moving down through the central part of the cockpit, all the way back to here. Okay, so that is how the general scan flows are done. Okay, so each one of our procedures, the uh, safety inspection, the preliminary flight deck preparation, the pilot flying pre-flight preparation, the final uh, flight deck preparation, all of this follows this scan flow. And a lot of your type rating is going to be built on you learning these things. And this is, this is a tip for you guys before you go into any type rating or even the MCC course, is to sit at home and practice and practice and practice these scan flows. You will have a manual, an FCOM, that FCOM will tell you what the switches should be doing, you know, what you're looking for, and it will follow this scan flow pattern. So you just have to sit and work and work and do it over and over and over again and check your sim partner on it. So let them do the check, um, let them do the scan flow while you sit with the FCOM. When they make a mistake, you point it out and then you switch. All right. So it's really, really helpful if you have a paper tiger at home, you know, just to uh, like, like a picture with the overhead panel, all of these panels in there, and you sit there and just point at the things to get it in to your motoric memory of how to do it. It will save a lot of time when you get into the simulator. Okay? Now, that is one thing. That is scan flows. If you have questions on that, please put them in below in the uh, comment section. Or if you're using the Mentor Aviation app, which I'm sure hoping that you are, then uh, just go into the chat and talk to other people about it. All right? So that is scan flows. The other really important thing that we, uh, that we talk about during the type rating are areas of responsibility. Okay. That is important because in a two pilot cockpit, you need to know which buttons that you are supposed to push and what things you are supposed to do at any given time. That is so that you don't start and kind of, you know, one is reaching for one thing while the other one is reaching for the same thing and you end up just staring at each other. That cannot happen. So every pilot needs to know what his or her area of responsibility is at any given time during the flight. And it's fairly easy actually. We have areas of responsibility is, is divided into pilot flying responsibilities, pilot monitoring responsibilities and then each pilot responsibility. Okay. They're slightly different on the ground than they are from when you're airborne. So on the ground, for example, if you start at your each, the each pilot area responsibility, each pilot is responsible for their own EFIS control panel and basically the things that are on their side of the cockpit. So light switches, uh, 
EFIS control panel, like I said, clock, the uh, oxygen panel, uh, sun visors, things like that. All right, screens. But if we start on the ground, the pilot flying area responsibility is basically everything else. So on the ground, when you're setting up for the departure, the pilot flying area responsibility is the entire overhead and aft overhead panel, the MCP, the center pedestal, the, well, flaps are not going to be removed at that point, speed bag, all of this is the pilot area of responsibility of the pilot flying. That's because the pilot flying is setting up for his or her departure. Okay, <laughs> So basically, you're setting up everything as part of your scan flows that we talked about earlier. And then, when it's time to brief, you will then brief you know, the uh, pilot monitoring on what you're intending to do. You will find that even though you do a lot of things, a lot of switches and a lot of checks during your setup, not all of it will be covered by the checklist. Now, the checklist is only checking essential items. So, the checklist will assume that you've been following the FCOM, your flight manual, and that you've done all of the other things that are not covered by the checklist. But the essential things like pressurization panel setup, for example, like MCP, like performance, like flaps, all of that is being covered by a checklist. You with me so far? So that was on the ground. Now, when we get airborne, it's slightly different because when we get airborne, the pilot monitoring and the pilot flying have different roles to fill. The pilot flying is going to be the one that is maneuvering the aircraft. Okay? The pilot monitoring is the one who's going to be communicating with ATC and do items that pilot flying wants him or her to do. So, what then is the area of responsibility of the pilot flying? Well, if we start with the individual pilots, they have the same areas of responsibility. So, EFIS control panels and basically their own sites. Okay? Pilot flying will be handling the MCP, thrust, speed brake, flap lever, however, that is going to be done by the pilot monitoring on the pilot flying command, but it's still the pilot flying response area responsibility, and also navigational equipment. But the navigational equipment and the flaps and the gear, for example, is going to be ordered by the pilot flying, but it's going to be executed by the pilot monitoring. Okay. That's so that we get a, a, a crucial cross-check in. However, all of the flying part, which is the autopilot, which is governed by the MCP, which is thrust, obviously, flaps, speed brakes, how to maneuver, all of that is done on the initiative of the pilot flying, which means that it's his or her area of responsibility. What we don't want is for the pilot uh, flying to be fiddling around with switches in the overhead and in the aft overhead panel, which means that that becomes the area of responsibility of the pilot monitoring, okay? Same comes to the FMC CDU to a certain extent. Everything that the pilot flying wants done, he or she will ask the pilot monitoring to do with a few small exceptions, but to make it easier for yourself, you can ask for basically anything. So if you want a routing change, for example, during the flight, you are going to ask the pilot monitoring to act to input the routing change, pilot flying will then check that it is correct and ask uh, the pilot monitoring to execute it and then verify that the correct mode is on. All right? Same if you want NTIs. So the NTIs, if I'm as pilot flying want NTIs to be on because I'm entering clouds for example, I'm going to ask my pilot monitoring to put engine NTIs on. Pilot monitoring will go up, put the start switches to continuous and put the engine NTIs on and verify that they get the correct reading from the, um, from the engine NTIs indication. That makes sense? So to make it really simple, pilot flying is responsible for flying the aircraft. Pilot monitoring is responsible for helping the fly pilot flying with everything that needs to be done that does, that required or would require the pilot, monitor, or sorry, the pilot flying to start looking outside. We want the pilot flying to be focusing on flying the aircraft, looking outside, looking at the instrument, to make sure that you're safe. So, to keep it really, really easy, that is area of responsibility. Another area of responsibility of pilot monitoring, of course, is the radio boxes, because the pilot monitoring is the one who's going to be doing the ATC communication. Okay? So, that's 
in a nutshell, you will see details when you go in and you look at your FCOM, you will see small details and small changes to this, but basically that's it. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. I uh, hope that's helpful. Now, remember that this video is done for you to understand the setup that I'm showing in the Mentor Aviation app. So if you want to see how this is actually done in real life, then uh, get the app, it's free to download, but you are going to have to pay for the actual instructional videos because I have to use this bad boy to do them. So for now, I hope you're all having an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.